This video is part one of a two-part series on this channel with The Last Bacon. Part two will be up on his channel in a week's time. Also, this video does contain spoilers from Subnautica. Now, when each and every one of us made it to the Lava Zone location in Subnautica for the first time, it's pretty safe to say we were all a little bit surprised. How is there magma underwater? Why doesn't it boil the surrounding water? These were only a few of the questions pertaining to the Lava Zone we all likely wondered. And it turns out, there are scientific answers to these questions. Today, we're going to be exploring the science behind the Lava Zone in Subnautica and answering some of the questions you may have about it. So without further ado, let's jump right in. The main question many of you guys are probably wondering about the lava zone is, why doesn't the magma boil the surrounding water? And we might actually have some very interesting real life science answers to this. There are actually places somewhat similar to the lava zone biome found in Sonautica back here on Earth, deep underwater. These locations are known as deep sea hydrothermal vents and are basically underwater geysers. Cold water seeps through cracks in the ocean floor where it meets molten rock. The water is heated to extremely high temperatures, which causes it to spew out through the so-called hydrothermal vents to meet with the cool seawater and start the cycle anew. A really interesting fact about these hydrothermal vents is that certain creatures actually survive here, in these extreme conditions, using a chemical reaction called chemosynthesis, which technically supports the possibility of life evolving in a place such as the lava zones in Subnautica. Another one of the amazing things about these vents is how hot the temperature can reach. The temperature at times can reach astounding numbers sometimes far beyond the boiling point of salt water, which is 225 degrees Fahrenheit or about 107 degrees Celsius. But in the Lava Lakes biome, which is the deepest, hottest biome in the game, which is also known as the active lava zone, temperatures only reach up to 75 degrees Celsius or 167 degrees Fahrenheit and this number would appear at first to be a bit off. The molten lava found there right next to the water at the temperature of 75 degrees Celsius is anywhere between 700 to 1200 degrees Celsius or 1292 to 2192 degrees Fahrenheit. And you would think that the surrounding water would be a similar temperature causing the water to boil, right? On planet Earth, the reason the water at that temperature near the hydrothermal vents doesn't boil is because of the pressure. The deepest hydrothermal vents are located at about 5,000 meters below sea level, where the pressure is about 500 Earth atmospheres. See, the way it works in water on Earth, every 10 meters, the pressure increases by one Earth atmosphere. Remember this, since it will be useful later. Because of this pressure, even if the water heats up above its boiling point at sea level, it is unable to evaporate and turn into gas. To get a better understanding of this, you first have to understand how the process of evaporation works. Imagine a jug of normal fresh water at sea level. The reason it doesn't evaporate and turn into a gas is because the weight of the atmosphere is pressing it down and stopping it from turning into a gas. But when the water becomes a certain temperature, it reaches the energy needed to break free of that weight and turns into a gas. And it's the same thing 5,000 meters down, except there's a lot more pressure. So because there is so much more pressure, there needs to be a lot more energy, or in this case heat, in order for the water to boil. This makes the boiling point at 5,000 meters about 460 degrees Celsius or 860 degrees Fahrenheit. And it's the same concept in Subnautica. Because of the pressure at 1,700 meters, which is the depth of the Lava Lake's location, the boiling point is a lot higher than it would be at sea level. We now understand the correlation between boiling point and pressure, but one question still remains. Why isn't the water temperature in the lava zones a lot higher? In some places, the water is directly touching molten lava, and like we said earlier, molten rock can be anywhere between the temperatures of 700 to 1200 degrees Celsius, 1200 to 2100 degrees Fahrenheit. So why isn't this direct contact causing an increase in temperature? And shouldn't the water boil at that temperature anyway despite the pressure? Well, there are some possible answers to these questions. One possibility is that because you are 1,700 meters deep and the water is of course extremely cold because you are that deep, the temperature of the freezing water and the molten lava could equalize each other out to some extent. There could be some sort of giant convection current where cold water from farther up or even from the void circulates inside the lava zone, is heated up and absorbs the heat from the lava and then heads back out, cooling off. 
This would, in a way, equalize the temperatures, which might explain why the water there is so cool. But there are still some flaws to this. Even if the water coming in is extremely cold, the water touching the lava should be a similar heat as the lava itself. Another possibility which we simply have to consider is that perhaps the thermometer doesn't work right in Synoptica, or maybe the developers simply got it wrong. It's not like the area temperature is a major game changer, as long as it's hot enough to burn the player, right? Simply put, if the temperature was about the same as the lava here on Earth, then it would boil, period. It would be hot enough to surpass the boiling point at the depth of 1700 meters, actually, which is roughly 355 degrees, so it should boil no problem, right? I think the answer to all of these questions is a combination of the previous theories. When traveling throughout the lava zone, you may notice bubbles rising up from the bottom of the seafloor, so maybe the water does evaporate after all, at least some of it. Here's our theory. Cold water travels into the lava zone biome from outside biomes and possibly even the void. It travels through a complex convection current where cold water is entering the biome and hot water is leaving the biome. Since hot water rises, it leaves, and since cold water sinks, it enters. The cold water travels throughout the biome. At some point, it passes near the lava and its temperature goes past its boiling point. It evaporates, turning into water vapor, and rises, making its way out of the cave. There are two possibilities from here. It can either rise all the way to the surface, or more likely it rises to a point where it cools off and condenses back into a liquid. Then the process repeats itself. And as for the in-game temperature meter, I think it's most likely the developers simply got this wrong or that the in-game thermometer can only read so high. It is also simply possible that lava behaves differently on this planet, or that the lava consists of a different type of melted rock which doesn't get as hot as it does back here on Earth. Now another thing you might be wondering about the lava zone is how the colossal sea dragon leviathans which patrol the area are able to breathe fire. Luckily, this question can easily be answered by simply scanning the creature, though admittedly that's not an easy feat. Since the PDA tells us, quoting, it even appears to be able to consume molten materials and expel them at its adversaries. So it is highly likely this creature directly eats lava and is able to somehow store it in its belly which must have over time adapted to the crazy temperatures, only to be later spewed out at hostile creatures or prey. One final question you may be thinking about is how the lava zone biome and the lava castle formation inside it formed in the first place. To answer this question, let's once again take a look at our own planet Earth. The hydrothermal vents of our planet, like we said earlier, are locations where cool seawater meets hot magma deep in the ocean. The lava zones are a similar thing, only on a wider scale. On planet Earth, extremely cold seawater travels down through a crack or a hole in the ocean crust near a subduction zone, or a place where two tectonic plates either move towards or away from each other, and meet the extremely hot magma there. Like we talked about earlier, this forms a hydrothermal vent. The water is then superheated and as we all know, shoots back out through the crack or hole it traveled in through. However, what is key is that when the water shoots out, it brings materials and rocks out with it. And this is likely how the lava zones formed probably through giant hydrothermal vents, but there is another possibility. The lava zone's location in Subnautica is pretty much inside a giant volcano. However, some areas are much more active than others. In this case, it is likely an area between two tectonic plates, either moving away from each other or pushing into each other, causing volcanic activity. If 4546b has tectonic plates similar to Earth, that is. Molten rock from deep beneath the planet spews outwards here, when it does this, it meets the cool ocean water, hardens, and forms into rock once again. And a combination of the hydrothermal vents and seawater meeting with extremely hot molten rock is likely how most of these amazing caves were formed. Have you ever wondered about the science behind the Lost River? This video is part one in a collab with The Last Bacon. In his video, he'll be exploring the science behind the Lost River biome and Subnautica. His video will be out in a week's time. Let me know in the comment section below if you have any questions or concerns. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. Please like and subscribe, it helps me out a ton, plus it's free. Help me reach 2,000 subscribers as fast as possible. I really appreciate all the support. Also, please check out my other content. I have lots of different kinds of Subnautica videos you guys might like. Check out my Discord server, Twitch, and Patreon. Thanks to my patrons King Nochos, Sir Lord Mister, and Charles the Bold Action Man. Become a patron and support today. And I will see you guys in the next video.